Kenya. Sasa tunataka kwenda kwa sherehe nyingine ndogo hapa. Kabla hiyo tuko hapa na Mheshimiwa Mwathi, Mheshimiwa Mwathi. Tuko hapa na Mheshimiwa Maoke Maore, Masi Kakuya, Ruth Mwaniki na Mheshimiwa Mpuri Apuri, party leader wa Nompeo na East African Parliament. Tuko hapa na PS Unkuli na PS Richard Lisiampe, Senator Okongo Omoge ni senior council. Sasa nataka tupate video ya baba kwa dakika tatu. Bada hiyo tukue na speaker wa Kenya, wa zamani, mweshmiwa Ole Kapala. Weka hiyo video ya baba, ya documentary. It was a hunch that took Kenya by surprise. <laughs> Straight out of the blue sky, seemingly away from the company of their respective close aides, President Tony Kenyatta and ODM leader Rilo Dinger shook hands on the steps of Harambe House, the block housing the office of the President in downtown Nairobi. The handshake came against occasioned by the bitterly disputed 2017 presidential elections that included a rerun boycotted by Rilo Dinger in October 2017. The handshake was a turning point for the heated political climate. It was a moment of statesmanship for both President Kenyatta and Rilo Dinger, who had at the time styled himself as the people's president, complete with a contentious mock swearing-in ceremony at Uhuru Park. The handshake before a crowd of media cameras suddenly ended a political crisis that was on the verge of dividing the country even physically to a stand audience as president kenyatta in rilo dinga explained the objectives of the kenya cannot succeed without all of us it needs all of us and this is to me, the spirit of the handshake. It is not about two people. It is about bringing a country back on track. It is about bringing the people of a nation to feel once again that they are part and parcel of the whole. It is to remove the issue of people feeling marginalized, isolated, left out, and to encourage a feeling that existed in this country once upon a time when some of us were children, but we hear those stories. Jordan, <laughs> Sasa tukasema tujenge madaraja. Tukumbuke watu tunasema hii sasa kana tunaingia sio wananasa peke yake. Anajubili anajubili nanasa pamoja. Born Raila Amolo in Maseno in January 1945, Raila Odinga is a scion of one of Kenya's foremost freedom struggle heroes, Jaramogi Ajuma Oginga Odinga. The older Oginga was an independence firebrand. 
that together with Jomo Kenyatta and other leaders fought the cause of ending colonial rule and negotiated the constitutional order of Kenya at the famous Lancaster conferences in London and to a politically conscious father was Raila Odinga born and as a child growing up he watched his father rise up to become the country's first vice president when Kenya was declared a republic in 1963 Raila Odinga's own political consciousness set in the mid 1970s when it became apparent that the country was on a general relapse complete with the rise of official political intolerance events that included political assassinations and intimidation arrest and detention of government critics quietly stoked the reformist flames inside Raila Odinga and by the end of the 1970s and the beginning of the 1980s he joined the list of those targeted as critics of the repressive state A coup attempt by elements of the Kenya Air Force on the 1st of August 1982 marked a turning point for Raila Odinga as he was detained and tortured having been falsely accused of a role in the coup attempt for 6 years Raila Odinga was detained without trial and held in solitary confinement he was released in february 1988 only to be rearrested in september the same year for allegedly engaging in political activities raila odinga's second stint in detention lasted close to a year ending on the 12th of june 1989 His subsequent freedom did not last long. For the third time, Raila Odinga was arrested again on the 5th of July 1990 for being part of a group of brave human rights and political reforms crusaders that had dared question the repressive political climate under the single party rule. His third stint in detention lasted exactly 1 year and 10 days. Raila Odinga was released from his last jail on the 21st of June 1991. In October 1991, fearing assassination and against a backdrop of violent state repression, Raila Odinga fled the country to begin life in exile. He snuck into Uganda, disguised as a priest, and proceeded to exile in Norway. Life in exile was not to be too long. Back home, the struggle he had been part of was bearing fruit faster than some anticipated. In December 1991, the notorious Section 2A of the Constitution was repealed and Kenya reverted to the multi-party system it abandoned in the 1960s. Pendekezo langu ni kwamba badala sisi kwa sababu ni nawahurumia mama nawahurumia wazee nawahurumia vijana wa university wa secondary school wa primary schools wako na mimi na sitaki hata moja awawe au waumie tufungue section hiyo na nauliza nyinyi nyote kukaa na mimi tuende barabara yetu tukiwa kanu pamoja lakini visiwe vyama vya ukabila kama naandikisha na kama ni ya ukabila it will not be registered Dinga returned from exile in February 1992 to begin life in elective politics winning and retaining the seat of member of parliament for Langata constituency for more than two decades In 2002, that is 10 years after the resumption of multi-party politics, Raila Odinga cemented his place as a consequential political force when in a year of dizzying political events, he emerged the architect of the transition that, that saw the Party of Independence Kanu roundly defeated in the country's first ever free and fair democratic elections. <laughs> Having unsuccessfully run for president for the first time in 1997, Raila Odinga embarked on a series of breathtaking experiments that included joining Kanu and seizing the strategic all-powerful position of Secretary General. Napendekeza kwamba Mheshimiwa Daniel Torotich Arapoi achaguliwe kama mwenyekiti wa chama cha Kanu. But the dalliance with Kanu came to a thrilling end when Raila Odinga disagreed with President Daniel Arap Moi's 2002 succession script. Moi had dramatically leapfrogged a youthful Uhuru Kenyatta over the large cast of seasoned hands that now included Raila Odinga.
The fallout for Moy was particularly costly as Raila Odinga walked out with a huge chunk of Kano leadership that included then Vice President George Saitoti. Opposition unity was Raila Odinga's new mission, a mission he pursued with selfless zeal as illustrated by his consequential endorsement of Moi Kibaki, the famous rallying call Kibaki Tosha. <laughs> The formation of the National Rainbow Coalition NAC and the endorsement of Mwai Kibaki proved a political masterstroke. Kano and Moi were outfoxed and Raila Odinga's energetic campaigns across the country constituted the final rights for a party whose assured defeat was just an election away. With Mwai Kibaki confined to a wheelchair by a nasty road accident, the entire campaign revolved around Raila Odinga who directed the show with ruthless efficiency. Kibaki and Nak won resoundingly and Raila Odinga sat in cabinet as roads and infrastructure minister. <laughs> Having been elected on the promise of reforms and a new constitution, Nak embarked on the process, albeit with increasing reluctance among conservatives in government that felt reforms were no longer necessary after the removal of Moi and Kano from power. But Raila Odinga pressed on. <laughs> And the Bombers of Kenya process of reviewing the constitution finally began. With conservatives shifting the game to the content of the proposed constitution, Raila Odinga formally drew the line and successfully opposed what he termed a mutilated version of the constitution NAC had promised Kenyans. In 2005, Raila Odinga resoundingly won the no vote against the proposed constitution. Against the back of that victory, the Orange Democratic Movement, ODM, a party styled from the symbol of the no vote, was born and retaining the voting patterns of the 2005 referendum and with Raila Odinga's presidential candidate, ODM was a sure bet of its supporters in the 2007 election. Sasa tunaenda kwa sherehe ya mwisho lakini kabla hiyo nataka Peter Kenneth asimame juu atambuliwe atukupatie nafasi Mheshimiwa Peter Kenneth yuko hapa Senator Senator Amos wako yuko hapa na women rep ya Nairobi Madam Pasta uh, Pasaris Esther Pasaris Sasa nataka kualika former speaker of the Kenyan National Assembly Mheshimiwa Francis Ole Kaparo Mheshimiwa karibu Order. Order for real. Before Kabla Sijakwa speaker, what I knew a Kaparo was. Nakama Kaparo, which is more Raila. Wow, I got you who wrote to Mekwa Marafiki with Metafuta Kura. Sijakupa. Lakini safari hii utapata kura yangu na marafiki. Na najua siko peke yangu. Kuna wengi tu Kenya mzima hii ambao kwa mara ya kwanza wataungana na wale wengi miaka yote wamekupia kura na utashinda sasa washa nirudi kazi hiyo ingine sije imetosha kazi yote ambayo inafanywa lazima kuwe na mazao na tumekaba mchana mzima tumezungumza tumeimba sasa itafika wakati wa kutoa uamuzi lakini nataka kufanya hakikisho hii mkutano huu ni wa Kenya sio ya ODM hiyo pengine itakuweko baadaye kuna ODM wako hapa ya mavingine wako hii ndio azimio la umoja 
ili wengine wasije wakafanya makosa ya kwamba ile resolution tumefikisha hapa tumepitisha hapa hata ni ODM hapana hii ni azimio la umoja tumefahamiana sasa na kuna bwana aliye leta mjadala atakuja kuwasomea mjadala huo tutachangia kidogo alafu tutaweka kwa kura ya umma yule bwana aliyeleta mjadala hapa ni dr nyamu joka sijui kama bado una haja na mjadala wako na kama uko nayo kuja wasilishi It's okay, I'm addressing your excellency. No, excuse me. Uh, your excellency, uh, the right honorable uh, prime minister, you will remember that in the early 1960s, your father traveled through Nyanza, and every time he attended a meeting, he would say, Piño Oacho. The people are saying, I am here, Your Excellency, Right Honorable Prime Minister, as the voice of the people. I, Davis Nyamu Njoka, a registered voter in Masioya constituency in Muranga County, within the region of the Mount Kenya, do hereby propose a motion that His Excellency Right Honorable um, Raira Amoro Odinga EGH vice to become the President of the Republic of Kenya in the coming presidential elections in the year 2002. The reason why I'm making this uh, proposal is because we as Kenyans believe that we are safe in your hands as the President of the Republic of Kenya because you are a young and patriotic Kenyan who will carry our hopes for the safe of a safe and equitable society in the Republic of Kenya. I move this motion. You must read your motion well. I, uh, I, the copy I have is that the election will be in August 2022, not 2021. Is that what you mean? I read 2022. Thank you. Do you have a seconder? Where is the seconder? Honorable Mishi Juma Boko, who is a voter in Likoni constituency, Shikadabu Ward, from the coastal region. I second the motion that His Excellency Raila Amolo Odinga 
EGH, vice for the presidency in the forthcoming presidential election in August 2022. I am confident that Baba Raila Amolo Odinga has what it takes to transform the economy while embracing digitalization, creating employment, and ensuring inclusivity. I believe devolution will thrive. I beg to second the motion. Order now. Order, order, order. 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 I will now propose the question, which is that following wide Azimio Laumoja consultations in all the regions of our great country, we, the people of Kenya, gathered here today at Kasarani Stadium for the Azimio Laumoja National Convention this 10th day of December 2021 do hereby request His Excellency Raila Amolo Odinga EGH Order 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 to present himself as a candidate in the forthcoming August 2022 presidential election. That's the question. I, there, I will give two opportunities to two young people, and then maybe we'll put the question after that. And I will have the first person to make a contribution, Irene Mayaka, a young lady from the Nyanza region. Irene. I, Irene Mayaka, a young person from Nyanza region, I wish to say the following. That His Excellency, the right Honorable Raila Amolo Odinga has devoted his entire life to fight for the struggles of liberating this country. I further state that in this struggle, Raila's focus has been on the ideals of inclusivity, devolution, sharing of power, and economic empowerment of young people, women, people with disability and the marginalized. And I have no doubt, absolutely no doubt, that through his presidency, these ideals will be achieved. I beg to support the motion. Thank you. I think I will, I will give the last intervention to another young person from the western side of our country, Mr. Moffat Mandela. I, Moffat Mandela, from the western Kenya, a youth from western Kenya, wish to state the following. That this country needs a statesman at the helm of political leadership. His Excellency Raila Molodinga has always put this country first. That he has always put this country before his personal and political interest. His Excellency Raila Molodinga is, has always had a big heart that is forgiving everyone that has always wronged him. 
His Excellency Raila Amolo Odinga is a man of great humility and it is these qualities that we need in a, in a leader that will take this country forward. It is in this background that I want to support. Thank you. I, I, I now, I now wish to put the question, which is that following my, as you know, La Umoja consultations in all the regions of our great nation, we, the people of Kenya, gathered here today at Kasarani Stadium for the Azimio La Umoja National Convention this 10th day of December 2021, do hereby request His Excellency Raila Amolo Odinga EGH to, to present himself as a candidate in the forthcoming presidential election in August 2022. As many as of that opinion say I. As, as many order. Order, order. As many as a contrary opinion say no, the eyes have it. and a servant of the people for the last 50 years. Today, I boldly declare 
that I'm neither repentant nor regretful of my own experience in the fight for a liberated Kenya. I because my country was worth it then and is worth it now. I bear scars of liberation with pride and embrace the blood, sweat and tears they cost me. By the way, the tears from the torture chambers are still running, as you can tell from the handkerchief that never leaves my hand. For years, I was not allowed to speak with other inmates. In fact, for six straight years, I did not sleep on a bed. For months on end, I was either held in communicado, in solitary confinement, or handcuffed and in transit to the next prison or detention. Relatives died, including my beloved mother and my own brother, and I never got the chance to say goodbye. I would not wish this to torment upon anyone, not even my worst enemy. Together with my comrades who endured torture and survived those dark days of despair, we would never let Kenya degenerate down the road of terror. No, not on our watch, not on my watch. But there was a positive side to my story. It's about a friend, Alando, of legendary beauty, with the brave heart of Luanda Magere. And this is the woman who stood by me when I was shunned by many. This is the wife of my youth, love of my life and partner to death, Mama Aida Betty Nyawira Odinga. In those hard times of long and uncertain incarceration, if I was not reading the Holy Bible, I found deep solace Mama Aida's love and support. She became a constant guest of the police cells through constant arrest and harassment. I can't thank her enough. Thank you, darling. Fellow citizens, what makes a great net is not the man it produces, but the man it honors. That is why I would be remiss if I do not pay homage to those that gave us the sacred lenses to stand tall, to speak free, and to think big on this very day. And here I'm talking about my comrades in arms, both alive and those who have fallen. I pay homage those who have gone before us, the fallen heroes of the second liberation. These include Kenneth Nido Matiba and Charles Robia. Many do not recall that I was detained at Committee Maximum Prison on the same day the two compatriots on the 5th of July 1990. 1990 for demanding multipartism. Other fallen compatriots include Georgia Nyona, Jean Marie Sirone, Martin Shikuku, Mukaru Nganga, Oki Okombaka, and Wangari Madai. I also pay homage 
to all the audacious martyrs who, for the sake of the people, chose constant crucifixion over relative comfort of conceding to repression. I hold the deepest respect to living icons like Mukami Wakimath, the wife of Didal Kimath. They called her the worst because like Kimathi, her husband, Mukami was a fearless fighter who mobilized daring hand bands of women in complex undercover Mau Mau operations. I salute her. Other liberators include Gugi Wadiongo, whose powerful written words enriched the ideologies of the struggle against the one-party regime. Koigi Wamwere, whose fearless voice inspired many to action. I remember Dr. Odiyan Bombay, the fearless chair of the Devolution Committee at the Bombers Conference, who was brutally assassinated, and Dr. William Mutonga, who distinguished himself as a selfless champion of social justice and comrades in the detention chambers. We also had Katama Mukangi, Kaimoji Wachira, Alamin Mazrui, all those colleagues who were with us at that time. In the course of this, this struggle, there have been ups and downs, advances and retreats, but we have never lost our direction. At this point, I must pay homage to my brother, His Excellency, President Uhuru Migai Kenyatta, for the foresight and sense of patriotism in initiating the dialogue that led to the handshake. It takes a seasoned statesman to shake the hand of his rival. I thank him. In the course of our discussions, we agreed that Kenya is greater than the two of us. We agreed that despite years of effort, Project Kenya has not quite taken the way of how our fathers envisaged. Where our founders envisaged unity, we have been held back by divisions, tribe against tribe, region against region, men against women, leader against leader. As if these divisions have not been cost enough, there are still massive efforts by other people to divide, divide us further, as rich and poor, young and old. We agreed that where our fathers dreamt of plenty within our borders, poverty has taken deep roots in our land. We agreed that it must deal a deadly blow to corruption before it brings down our country. We, res we resolve to work together to unite our people in order to realize the Kenyan dream as coined by our founding fathers. Justice is our shield and defender. May we dwell in unity, peace and liberty, plenty be found within our borders. That is the foundation of the Azimio La Umoja. I must add here that with this reconciliation, I ask for nothing, and I will never ask for anything except the opportunity to serve. Peacemaking is not a self-enriching enterprise. 
it is a calling from God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Fellow countrymen, let me shift gears now to other stories. Daughters I witnessed, listened to, and collected on my Zimio La Umoja tour of every corner of our greatest republic over the last three months. This meeting today, the culmination of the Zimio La Umoja journeys you have taken together. And you have already seen through the videos some of the issues that were raised during the consultations. Kenyans spoke from their hearts during the 15 Azimio La Umoja Mammoth meetings. At the coast, Wanainchi reminded me that land issues remain a subject of pain. Many families long for the privilege of possessing family land that they can pass down to generations. They cried about the huge impact of the standard gauge railway on their businesses. We traveled into the rift, North Rift, and there I listened to concerns of residents whose livelihoods are being destroyed by cartels in agriculture. People who import maize while farmers are stuck with their maize. They lamented the collapse of the dairy and tea sectors and the high cost of farm inputs. The communities of West Pocot County wondered where there was a West Pocot when there is no East Pocot. They asked to be identified specifically as a community in the national census with a code and their own development projects and the creation of two more constituencies and five wards. I also spent time in the Mount Kenya, both west and east, and I can confirm to this congregation that if the mountain was smooth, it would be impossible to climb it. The mountain has to be bumpy for you to scale it. On this, I'm happy to note that I've reached very close to the peak. I've seen the Batrian and the Lenana peaks, and the people have promised that we shall walk together to the promised land yonder. If I prove that I understand and shall address their concerns. Residents express concerns about the equitable distribution of development resources within the region and the proportional representation. They summarize it in the one call for one man, one shilling, one vote. And they want to and they want to earn more from their tea, coffee, parathram, vegetables, potatoes, rice, and dairy. Nyanza complained about non-functioning and collapsed cotton, sugarcane, fishing, tobacco, tea, and soapstone industries and the denial of economic opportunities for the region. In Turkana, the co continuing challenge of general insecurity, poverty, drought, and famine were raised repeatedly. In the Lower Eastern, the local communities complained of a serious lack of water, recurring famine, and lack of economic opportunities. Northern Kenya felt profoundly let down by Nairobi. Their children are being denied identity cards by their own country. Education is collapsing 
due to insecurity and livestock sector is severely threatened by drought and disease. I took note that while our people of Mount Kenya spoke of one man, one vote, one shilling, Northern Kenya spoke of one man, one kilometer, one shilling. Indeed, Kenya is diverse in its needs and its ideas to address the needs. In Western Kenya, I was repeatedly reminded of the local industries like sugar that had been allowed to collapse due to corruption, neglect, and mismanagement. Fisheries and mining are struggling. Young men and women who would have gained from the local thriving industries spoke of how they are forced to migrate from home to seek opportunities elsewhere. The Mark community is worried about lack of livestock and pastoral, pastoralist economy. They worry about the environmental degradation upstream, which impacts them directly. They have their historical injustices of a land. Then they are also concerned about the environmental degradation and uh, the Mao forests. These are just some of the concerns that I noted, internalized, and, and I took, took them on as a personal mission. Listening to our people made me look back over the last five decades. It became crystal clear that when much has been achieved, much remains to be done. I stand here deeply concerned, indeed horrified, at how our peers at independence left us far behind. Nations like South Korea, Malaysia, and Singapore, with whom we were at the same level of development in 1964, have largely vanquished us and they have vanquished the extreme poverty. Today, they manage the diseases like COVID as effectively as all other functioning countries. Their education systems are a dealt a deadly blow to the ignorance and put them in the Premier League of the Fourth Industrial Revolution. You have to change tact. You have to catch up. Fellow Kenyans, following the listening hours and to address the concerns that have emerged, we came up with a 10-point people's program as follows. Point number one, Inua Jamii Pesam Fukoni, a nation's greatest greatness is judged by how it treats its poor and vulnerable. Pesem Fukoni is a social protection program that will deliver 6,000 shillings per month to the 2 million to the, to the 2 million of the country's most needy families. And I want to emphasize, it is not a handout, but an investment and a foundation for a new transformational value chain that will also trigger massive economic activity and create thousands of localized small-scale businesses and enterprises across the country. This will lead to millions of jobs and the eventual development of a thriving middle class. The resulting middle class and small and medium enterprises 
will be a robust market for larger, more national corporations. Point number two, Baba Care. Each of us has experienced the all-consuming strain that accompanies the ill health of a family member. We will ensure that each and every Kenyan has a social insurance, a health insurance uh, uh, plan. Those who cannot pay, the government will pay for them so that no Kenyan should die or suffer or lack treatment because of lack of money. Point number three, Kazi Kwawote. This is about securing the welfare of the people by generating avenues for productivity through job creation programs for investing in the critical Juakali sector and other macro, micro and macro economic simulation schemes. Point number four, Uchumi Kwa Kinamama. This will focus on the true multipliers of the wealth in our community, our women. The program will unlock access to financing for women-led businesses and provide support for women and other enabling factors, such as access to assets for production, land tenure, and proportional representation in all government levels. Point number five, hashtag Inawezekana. We know that our youth are closer to the future than we are, but they are exploited as cannon fodder for bad politics. Now more than ever, we need to invest in preparing our youth for that future. The program will equip our youth with the mindset, skills, funds, and technology to enable them innovate at par and even surpass their global counterparts. Point number six, waste not a, a single child. Education is non-negotiable. This program be an aggressive scheme to ensure that all, not some of our children, get rightful access to quality education. Point number seven, for Northern Kenya, sorry, sorry. Point number seven, Fukuzanja. The aim here is not to merely feed, but to generate agricultural bounty that Kenya has the potential to produce. We will factor in climate change, adaptation, and mitigation to support and help realize higher agricultural productivity across the nation. Point number six is about Northern Kenya, where children have dropped out of school because of lack of teachers. We will have affirmative, affirmative action program to ensure that teachers are admitted at a lower rate so that we can have sufficient teachers to teach in schools in Northern Kenya. Point number nine, one county, one product. I firmly believe that the idea of devolution in Kenya had the transformative potential of rich mineral mines, abandoned oil fields, and other traditional markets of a nation's affluence. One County, One Product program is designed to be a launch pad to a Kenya which consumes its products, exports excess, and registers surpluses, no deficits. 
the national government will support materially and technically towards an ultimate vision where the 47 counties will begin industrializing at unstoppable rates. The tenth pillar of my vision has to do with the principles of administrative continuity. By continuity, I mean building and improving on the gains that have been made by the administrations that came before. Africa suffers a retrogressive mindset of starting afresh instead of advancing existing accomplishments. When one administration sets up something, the next knocks it down. This makes many countries in the continent stuck in a constant state of ignition, never making it to acceleration and takeoff. Kenya must not be a start-stop nation. This is a waste of time and resources and should not be entrenched in Kenyan political culture. For example, President Kenyatta's Linda Mama program could not have worked without the construction of health facilities and upgrading of transport networks that we undertook during the Grand Coalition Government. The plan for a rapid bus transit system could not have been operationalized without the construction of the Zika and Bagadi roads. The plan for the Lamu port dates back to 1972 when President Mwai Kibaki was finance minister. It took almost 50 years for it to be launched by Kibaki as president in 2012 as he was leaving office. President Uru Kenyatta took it up in 2013, ran with it, and has implemented it. Lamu project is one whose ultimate vision I see clearly. Ignore it when it squanders opportunity. By another 50 years, to have a World Cup transshipment hub that will reap, reap, reap exceptional economic benefits for our country. My manifesto will bear a crystallized description of the 10-point people's program delving into workings and plans that will actualize it for the people. These are just but highlights of new programs that we shall roll out to respond to needs expressed at Azimil Omoja events. Very soon, ladies and gentlemen, I will unveil a detailed manifesto addressing the critical concerns like corruption, public debt, industrialization, ICT and digital economy, promotion and protection of businesses, and particularly protection of private property. Our business community deserve protection and they will get it. Fellow citizens, at the top of our national government, where leadership is exercised to the maximum in governing and changing our nation is the presidency. The president makes a difference in the life of this nation. Having listened to your calls during our conventions, give my credential to this congregation and the nation at large, and having spelled out the people's aspirations as I understand them, and the Azimio Laumoja, and having given my 10 point vision for Kenya on this day of December. 10th, 2021, I, Raila Amolo Dinga, having been, having, having been faithful and committed to building a national democratic and progressive Kenya in our lifetime, having worked for many patriotic Kenyans to achieve this goal. 
I do hereby accept to present myself as a presidential candidate at the presidential elections on the 9th of August 2022, following the request and anonymous given by the Veins. I've been driving this train Years in this lane, there's no stopping this flame Cause I came to the game and I changed it to play How I like rearranged it to my own domain Yeah, I got what it takes, made lots of mistakes Taking shots, skipping breaks, feeling lost, feeling great Popping off, singing straight, never stop, never changed All the squad here to play and I've got something to say, yeah I work hard each and every day I get lost in the words I say I don't push pause, no I push play I won't stop till I make a change I withdraw on the things I make I turn flaws into flawless traits I build tall, never captain space I won't stop till I hear him say up again i got tired eyes need a cup of blend that's right in the am that's my only friend no light just the sun coming up on the horizon i lose track of time yeah i move fast and climb a new class divine yeah true passion shines and i'm through passing time i choose stacking dimes you snooze half the time while i move passing by uh. i work hard each and every day i get lost in the words i say i don't push pause no i push play I won't stop till I make a change I withdraw on the things I make I turn flaws into flawless traits I build tall, never cap in space I won't stop till I hear him say Baba atakuwa kwa kinyara kinyiro ya kugombea kiti ya urais wa jamuri ya Kenya Mijano we Mijano we Lakini vile vile Mimi nasema Bada kuzunguka kile mahali Tulikubaliana na ndugu yangu Uhuru Kenyatta. Tutaleta wa Kenya pamoja. Na kuna vitu vitano. Mmoja anaitwa utu. Pili ni undugu. Tatu ni umoja. Nne ni usawa. Tano uzalishaji. Haya yote tulikubanisha pamoja na nikitaitwa azimio la umoja kwa hivyo nataka let me my years ngoje ni kidogo vijana ngoje ni kidogo vijana vijana wewe vijana wewe Yana we Natangaza Tuanzia leo Azimio la umoja Itakua azimio la umoja movement Na itakua Itakua ni mseto It will be a coalition 
azimio la umoja movement na nikisema azimio mnasema inawezekana azimio la umoja azimio 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 leo tuko na hereby launch azimio la umoja movement muafaka wananchi tusalie tumetulia ili kumruhusu viongozi kumpa kongole engineer daktari Raila Amolo Odinga kwa kubali mwito na niombe nipewe leo ni leo ni perero ni lero asemaye kesho ni muongo Niombe tumpe nafasi ya Asante DJ Niombe mulio kwa jukua mushuke ndio muziki endele Wale mko kwa kujukua shuka muziki endele